Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen and welcome to my home. I'd like to start off by wishing you all a super happy and blessed Ramadan. Ramadan is such a beautiful and holy and blessed month. It is full of peace and joy and love. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful month. I personally love Ramadan. I love the spirit of Ramadan. And I love the food of Ramadan, obviously. Now, speaking of food special for Ramadan, what's the thing that we eat for 30 days during the month of Ramadan every single day? Obviously, it's Ataif, which is the most famous dessert that, that it somehow it's only eaten during the month of Ramadan. I don't know why. I don't know where this tradition came from where we only eat Ataif during Ramadan, but it's the way it is. So today we're going to make a taif from scratch. We're going to make the dough, we're going to make the filling, and we're going to make the sugar syrup that we pour on top of the taif. So I hope you guys enjoy this recipe, and I wish you again a beautiful and blessed Ramadan. And make sure to watch until the end because I'm also going to demonstrate how to make the sugar syrup that we pour on top of the taif. The ingredients you need to make the taif are some all-purpose flour, some semolina, some sugar, some baking powder, some salt, some yeast, and warm water. And now to make the ataif, I'm going to start by activating the yeast. If you're using instant yeast, it's fine. Then you can, then you don't have to do the step. You can just mix all the ingredients together. Um, but because I'm using dry active yeast, I'm going to start by activating the yeast uh, with the sugar and the water. And then after it foams up, I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So now I'm going to add my yeast with the two tablespoons of sugar and only half half cup of warm water the water must be warm it must be lukewarm i would say otherwise if it's not then the yeast will not activate properly so just mix them together in a medium bowl we're going to use the same bowl to add the rest of the ingredients later so make sure the bowl is large enough and now just leave it until the yeast foams up about five to ten minutes Okay, so after about 10 minutes, this is what my yeast looks like. So it has foamed up. And so now I'm going to start adding the rest of my ingredients. I'm going to add them all at once. So starting with the flour, the semolina, the baking powder, the salt, and the remaining two cups of water. Okay, and now we're going to whisk it until it becomes smooth. Perfect consistency. It's not too thick, not too thin. It's pourable because I want to be able to pour it into the pan. So it's it's perfect. Generally, if you stick to the quantities that I listed, you should be fine. It should give you the perfect consistency. Okay, so we just whisk it until you get rid of all the lumps. And now we're going to cover it with some plastic wrap. So now we're going to let it rest for about half an hour to an hour. And we want to do that because we, we want it to rise and increase in volume a little bit so that we get some air into the batter and we get a, a fluffy uh, ataif at the end. And um, the yeast will cause this. The, it's the yeast that will cause it to rise a bit. So now we're going to leave it alone in a warm, dry place for approximately half an hour to an hour. So half an hour later, this is what my batter looks like. Do you see how it's risen? and how it's all bubbly and fluffy see beautiful beautiful okay so now i'm ready to cook my ataif but before i do i'm just going to transfer the batter into this um, measuring cup and that way it's just easier to pour directly into the into the pan now we're going to cook the ataif. So in a flat non-stick shallow pan over medium heat, so it's between low and medium but closer to medium, um, spray your pan with non-stick cooking spray or just some butter, like just um, spread some butter on top. And when the pan is hot, pour approximately one quarter cup of the batter in the center. And this quarter cup should give you an ataif which has a diameter of four inches and if you need to just um, flatten it with the back of a spoon like that just to make them round and you'll notice that as you cook them there will be bubbles forming on top of the ataif you have to cook the ataif until you see the bubbles all over the top and until the batter on top of the ataif has dried off
Okay, so you see now all the batter has dried off and the back is golden brown like that. We're not going to cook the other side, we're only going to cook it on, on one side. And then place your atayef in the large flat tray, keeping the, the golden side down. And also try to have them not sticking to each other because they are kind of moist and if you basically stack them on top of the, each other, they might, uh, they might stick to each other. So just place them like that side by side until you finish cooking all your batter. To fill the atayef, I'm going to use two things, some cheese and some chopped walnuts. This is like traditionally what we use to fill the atayef, but you can use other fillings too, like uh, coconut flakes or pistachios. Now I want to talk a little bit about the cheese. So the cheese I'm using today is white cheese. Um, we use this in the Middle East, we call it white cheese, but if, for example, if you live in, um, in a place where this is not available or if you don't know what white cheese is, then you can substitute this for mozzarella cheese. But be careful, I'm not talking about the, the, the shredded mozzarella cheese that you use for pizzas, for instance, or the, the blocks of mozzarella cheese that is uh, processed. I'm talking about the real, the original um, mozzarella cheese that, uh, that's not too salty, that you would use, for instance, to make the uh, mozzarella, tomato and basil salad. That's the one I'm talking about. It comes in blocks like this, like round blocks, and it's usually soaking in water. That one is not too salty, and you can substitute the white cheese with that that particular cheese, that mozzarella cheese. Okay, also the recipe I'm making today will yield about 20 atayves and I'm going to fill half of them with cheese and the other half with walnut. So for the ingredients that I'm listing below, um, this amount, which is about 200 grams of cheese, is enough to fill 10 atayves and similarly one cup of chopped walnuts is enough to fill approximately 10 atayves. Now if you don't want to use both fillings, if you only want to use cheese, then go ahead and double the amount of cheese for the filling same thing for the walnuts. So now it's time to start filling the atayef. I'm going to start with the walnuts. So to the walnuts, I'm going to add two teaspoons of sugar just to sweeten them a little bit. Just mix it well to make sure that the sugar is distributed evenly. And then taking the atayef, place approximately one to two teaspoons of filling in the center. and fold it like so and pinch the edges to form a half circle. There, like that. Now I have to mention something very important. While you are working with the atayef, as you are filling them, Cover with saran wrap the ones that you are not using because they will dry out and sometimes filling the atayef can be a little bit time consuming so you, you have to make sure that the, the, your, your atayef don't dry out. So just uh, cover them lightly with some saran wrap or with a tea towel until you use them basically. So now I'm going to show you how to fill it with the cheese. So it's exactly the same thing. You use, you place about one tablespoon or maybe two teaspoons of cheese in the center and you fold it, pinch the edges and place this in a plate covered. So now the second to last step is to fry your atayef. You're going to place approximately one inch deep of frying oil, um, either canola oil or corn oil, and you're going to heat the oil over medium heat for a couple of minutes. And when your oil is hot, you're going to drop your atayef and cook them for approximately two minutes on each side until they are golden and crispy. There. They're not sticking to each other, but I have filled the pan like that. So after about two minutes, I'm going to turn and fry the other side. So you see they're, well, you can't probably see, but they're, they're crispy. I can tell by hitting them like that with a spoon that they're kind of hard. And that's what we want. We want them to be lightly crispy. 
We don't want to burn them. We just want to, you know, like have them to be crunchy. That is beautiful. And now we're going to fry this side for two minutes and we're almost done. Okay, let me just see. Perfect. So it's, it's crispy and it's golden and it's just perfect. And that is it. I'm going to remove them gently and place them on a plate with paper towels so that it absorbs some of the oils. <laughs> And as the oil is being absorbed, get your sugar syrup out and your plates and get ready to eat. So now the last step to do before we dig in is we're going to pour some sugar syrup on them, cover them well with it and go ahead and enjoy. And then you just turn them to cover the other side with the sugar syrup. and we're ready to eat. To make the sugar syrup you need, one and a half cups of sugar with one cup of water, a teaspoon of lemon juice, and a teaspoon of orange blossom water. I always like to start by preparing my sugar syrup first because it has to be cool to room temperature before you use it. And so I start with it, I let it cool, I set it aside, and I do the rest of my dessert, whether they're atayef or other things. So in a saucepan over medium heat, you're going to pour your sugar and your water. And stir it until the sugar dissolves. When the mixture starts to boil, add the lemon juice and stir. And now let it boil for approximately 10 minutes until it thickens. And just stir it once in a while. starting to thicken and by the way it will continue thickening as it cools so when you start doing this and it falls into like a, a slow stream then you can stop it took about 10 minutes of boiling so I'm gonna turn off the heat and add the orange blossom water this will give it a beautiful aroma. And continue stirring it until it stops bubbling. Now let it cool a little bit before you transfer it into a container. When the syrup cools down a little bit, pour it into a container. Cover it. And now we can store it at room temperature for weeks, if not months. And that's pretty much how we make a tayef. Mmm. Wonderful. Really, really good. It's very, um, it tastes exactly like the, the atayef we buy at the bakery, if not better. And as you saw, it's very easy to make. My mom used to make this all the time when we were living in Canada because we didn't have any atayef, like the dough available um, easily. So she'd just make it from scratch. I don't know why she stopped. It's, it's really easy to make. It's just that I guess people just started buying it from the bakeries because it's easier, but I mean, there's really nothing to it. It's just like making pancakes, except that it's um, a life. <laughs> and in case you're wondering why we never lose weight in Ramadan, even though we fast all day, it's because one bite of this pretty much makes up for the whole day of fasting. <laughs> so, hmm. It's worth it though. Okay guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe and I really hope you try making a thai from scratch for a change. I know that if you live in Jordan like I do, I mean it's it's very easy to buy and it's available pretty much everywhere in Ramadan. 
but um, try making it from scratch for, for a change. You'll feel so good when you're done, you know? You're like, you look at it and you say, hey, I made this. So thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Again, I wish you a wonderful and blessed Ramadan to you and your family and all your loved ones. Bye.